<laughs> Before Danny Brown would have his own hilarious talk show on Noisy. What do you think about this mother ghost right here? Uh, I'd have to smash for the story. <laughs> Before Danny Brown would collab with artists like ASAP Rocky, run the Jewels, Kendrick Lamar, Freddie Gibbs, Schoolboy Q, and become a double XL freshman in 2012. Before Danny Brown would receive a legendary act of groupie fandom live on stage, which we can't play for you guys because it'll get this video demonetized, but let's just say it's probably the craziest act I've ever seen someone do, well, live on stage. Before Danny Brown would have over half a million followers on Twitter and Instagram and close to 150,000 subscribers on YouTube at the time of this recording. Danny Brown's career is a story of perseverance, remaining true to self and reaching one's full potential, but it also has the highs and lows of fame, mental health struggles and addiction. Now before all the success, he was on the run from the law for almost a year. He went to jail and when he came out, he had no money and nothing left but his dreams of becoming a rap superstar. Now Danny, he almost signed a deal with one of the most famous rappers in the game, but he didn't get signed because of his jeans. Yeah, for real. We're gonna get into that a little bit later in this video. What's going on guys? It's your boy Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of Danny Brown prior to fame. Here for you of course and before they're famous. Now we've covered other Detroit rappers on this show, including Big Sean and Eminem off the top of my head, also T Grizzly, but you guys gotta let us know who's next in the comments down below. And before we start, I got a trivia question for you guys. If Danny Brown wasn't rapping, what would he want a career in? Let me know, you know where? Now let's get into this video. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! My name is Daniel, and welcome to my neighborhood. <laughs> Danny Brown was born Daniel Dewan Sewell on March 16th, 1981 in Detroit, Michigan. Now his parents were very young when they had him with his mother being 18 and his father being 16. Now his mom would read him Dr. Seuss books before Danny could even speak, and legend has it that he first started talking while young Danny he would speak in rhyme. Now one of his first rhymes was Dad Bad. Now music was also in his life from a young age. Danny's father was a DJ who would spin records for Danny from artists like LL Cool J, Wu-Tang, and A Tribe Called Quest. Now E-40 is one of Danny's early inspirations in terms of flows. Thank you to E-40 because I'm rapping now because it is an instructional record kind of. Uh, yeah, man, he's the, man, this is E-40, man. It's Charlie Hustle, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so naturally, from the time he was in kindergarten, he wanted to be a rapper. Now Danny would tell his classmates about his dreams, but they were a little less receptive. People would just laugh at me. That's a, a pretty funny job, they'd say. Now Danny's family, they also had a lot of property. Now his grandmother, she bought five different houses with the money she earned from working on the Chrysler line. Now Danny says that she owns three houses in a row on the same block. And this is where she raised her three kids and many others who needed a place to stay. Now Danny, he was raised in one of these houses. I was born at Henry Ford Hospital, which is not too far from here. Literally probably 10 minute drive, five minute drive. We lived here till I was in the first grade and then that's when we moved to the east side. Danny was writing raps in the third grade and even rapped at his fifth grade graduation. Now he was one of the only black kids in his class in elementary school up until middle school. Cause then when I got to middle school and I went to like an all black school, it was like, this shit damn right. Totally different. <laughs> totally different. Night and day. Yeah, I was like, this shit Night and day. Nigga was beating me up every day. <laughs> it was in the sixth grade that he was hit by a car while riding his friend's bike that resulted in his once famous chipped tooth. Then in high school, Danny, he skipped all his classes so that he could go and hang out in the drama room. But me and my drama teacher fell out because he always wanted me getting plays and shit. And I was like, man, that's lame. I don't want to be on no play. So he would get mad at me like, oh, you don't really know. You're not taking advantage of, of your talents and stuff like that. Danny's parents did their best to shield him from the rough Detroit streets that surrounded him. Now they wanted to keep him in the house as much as possible, so they would always buy him the newest video games to keep him inside. Not to say they weren't guilty of some street stuff themselves. In fact, he told Complex. A torture I rap about seeing my uncle smoke rocks off a stove when I was seven, I was at my grandmother's house. My whole family, one way or another, had something to do with drugs. Whether they were using them, selling them, everybody in my family had some type of encounter with drugs, prescription or illegal. Being surrounded by this kind of lifestyle resulted in Danny getting mixed up in it pretty early on. And when he was finally able to leave the house, he would stay out for four days at a time. But Danny, he wasn't made for that lifestyle. He stated, I had nobody over there and I'm the oldest with two brothers and a younger sister and I'm kind of not really gangster like that. 
But despite his lack of hands in fights, well Danny, he still began dealing at the age of 18. Now his parents split up and his father left, so at that point Danny, he felt the pressure of being the man of the house. Now all of his friends, they were caught up in the lifestyle, and he thought that he had to do the same. I always told myself I was going to be a rapper my whole life. I was selling drugs since that's what all my friends were doing, and it was kind of something to rap about, maybe. From 19 to 21, the dude was making bank, pulling in $10,000 a day, but eventually the law caught up with him. Now he told himself that he would stop after his first case, but his activities did not stop, and neither did his run-ins with the law. So the only logical thing to do was take a page out of TK's book and do the race. Now Danny, he claims that he ran for the law for at least five years. But eventually, Danny, he was caught and he had to serve eight months in jail. Now, it was in jail that he says that he really found himself and he would be rapping all the time. Now, he also made friends with his CEO and he even got special perks. I don't even eat the jail food no more, Joey. They bring me Burger King. I'm motherfucking taking Subway sandwiches up to my bunk. Like, I'm living that type of life in county jail. You feel what I'm saying? Like, the fucking police. I'm like teacher's pet. He was working registry in prison, so everybody was a fan of him. And the job, well, it also came with a few other perks. And what I would do is, <laughs> I would pass out the sandwiches to the female inmates too. Smart. So I see one come in, you can see her broken and battered. <laughs> you don't know what she's going through, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you need a sandwich, so girl. So I would always that shoulder, she could lean on. Yeah. I, would, I would get the inmate number, I would look okay. on the slip, and I would get the inmate number, and then I would write them, like, yeah, I was the guy passing you the sandwiches. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I see your case, I know what you're going through, baby. Oh. <laughs> you get what I said? In jail, he also learned great tricks like this. Do you know you could take a garbage bag and like wrap it over your toilet and then you know you flush all the water out your toilet and you just put your ear to the bowl and then just yell down the bowl and there's what? other motherfuckers that did that and then now you talking with them like that was like internet chat lines and county jail. <laughs> After he got out he was scared to violate his probation and had no money left so Danny decided to take rapping seriously. He told Complex. I took it serious from that time, but it took a lot of shit to happen in my life to get me confident to know I could do it. I had more confidence when I got out of jail because the day when I got out of jail, I started selling weed. I ain't had no money after the first two months, like I was better off in jail. By then I was already making my New York trips and going to recording studios, so I was already serious when I got locked up. When I got out, it was like, it's now or never. His rap career began in the group called the Reservoir Dogs. Now in the group were the rappers, Dope Head and Chips. Now the group dropped an album called, well, actually, I'm not even gonna try and bother and read it because it's pretty complicated. Okay, I'll try. Run His Spockets and Dumper Mendarvia? Ah, anyway, besides that and it being really long and hard to pronounce, well, the group received some radio spins in Detroit with their song called Yes. But it was Danny's unique rapping style that caught the attention of someone over at Rockefeller Records. Now he was flown to New York City by A&R Travis Cummings, where he recorded with artists on the label and an official studio. I mean, in an official studio. Ultimately, Danny, he didn't mesh with The Rock and eventually returned home to Detroit in not much of a better place musically than he was before. But Danny, he started working with local producer Nick Speed and they began crafting a sound. In 2010, Danny Brown's ties became friends with a member of legendary rap group, G-Unit. That's right. Okay, I'm not talking about 50 Cent, but still, Danny, he became cool with Tony Yayo, and Yayo reached out. Now, he was a fan of Danny's music, so the two recorded a collaborative album together known as Hawaiian Snow. Now, Brown was cool with G-Unit. He did an album with one of their members. He was recording music in New York. So the question remained, would Danny Brown sign to 50 Cent's label? Well, Fiddy was a fan of the music and he loved Danny's rapping ability, but he hated Danny's tight jeans. That's right. So because of that, he didn't want to sign him. I'm like, not even kidding. That is what, you know, stopped Danny from working with Fiddy or signing with him. Speaking more on the matter, Danny had this to say. It was a real thing. Fiddy was with it. He just didn't sign me because of my jeans. He liked the music, but he didn't like the way I looked. Everybody's looking at my tight pants. I got my tight pants. I got my tight pants on. No, Danny, he definitely did have a different look. His hair almost looked like he went to the barber and said, fuck me up. Now his teeth, they weren't all there. And he was rocking leather jackets. So Danny, well, he didn't sign with 50 Cent. But that didn't stop his career. That's how my, this one got chipped. You know what I'm saying? Playing ball? <laughs> yeah, nigga rebound me, coming down off the rebound. <laughs> Boop. 
because it's too so fucking big. It's hanging out my mouth. Probably Harry had my mouth open trying to get the rebound. Danny kept making and releasing free mixtapes in his Detroit State of Mind series and his first studio album, The Hybrid, in 2010 on an indie label. Danny states that album as the moment that he found his voice in rap. But his breakthrough project came a year later. Now Brown signed to Fool's Gold Records after Q-Tip and A-Track heard what Danny was doing musically and were fans. Now through the label, he released the album Triple X as a free download. Now it was loved by fans and critics. Now Pitchfork, they gave it an 8.2 out of 10 and Spin called it the best hip hop album of the year. And your boy Anthony Fantano, well he gave it an 8 out of 10. And I know this is a hip hop review. I'm sure I'm gonna see some comments that, that are all like, the needle drop reviews. Too much hip hop. Wah. I can't help but that hip hop is killing it this year. I can't help that. I'm just following my ears. My cameraman right here is obsessed. Why can't we do Anthony Fantano before they're famous? I was actually talking to him in the DMs, so I'm sure it'll be coming. I'm feeling a light zero on I'm gay. In 2012, Danny Brown was named as part of the XXL freshman class list alongside Kendrick, MGK, and French Montana. Now, although he's had a lot of success since then, well, Danny's also gone through a lot of ups and downs. Now, Danny, he suffered from depression and anxiety that has been matched with drug use. Now, in 2014, he told his Twitter followers, Depression is serious. Y'all think I do drugs because it's fun? He continued by calling out the music industry for fake caring about people until they actually need help, or worse. Now, after dropping his Atrocity Exhibition album in 2016, a fan later asked him about his most important lesson. To which he replied, Never spend 70000 on samples for an album that no one buys because you will be in debt. So while it appears that his mental headspace was in a clearer place, well, his pockets, they took a hit. But fans, they came to his support and let Danny know that it was worth it. Now, as of today, it seems like Danny is in a really good place. He just dropped a new album. He has a new talk show on Noisy, and it seems like he's making big moves for his career. But if he wasn't rapping, well, he would have been doing something in entertainment anyways. I love doing like improv sketches. Like even if I wasn't a rapper or something, I'd probably be at like Second City or something like that. You know what I'm saying? That would have been fun for me. And now he's got a new look. He's got new teeth. But as for the rest of the story, well, I think I'm going to wrap this one up here because this is before they're famous. My name's Mike McCrady. We make all sorts of celebrity bios here for you on this channel. Be sure to let us know who's next in the comments down below. If you're new to this channel, you got to subscribe. Did I already say that? You got to hit that like button. Check out these other videos we have for you somewhere. And I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!